Hello and welcome to this video. So in this video, we'll be talking about how to actually compute the value of a determinant. We technically talked about this in the case of a 2 by 2 matrix in the previous video when we talked about a geometric interpretation of a determinant. But in this case, the video, we'll be talking about how to physically compute determinants of a 2 by 2 matrix, which we talked about in the last video. A 3 by 3 matrix. And in the later videos, we'll talk about how to compute more general n by n matrices. In general, uh, the determinant of a large matrix is quite difficult to compute, but for some cases, it's more easier than the others. And generally, you can simplify down determinants to make them a lot easier to compute with. But with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about how to compute 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 determinants using a few special kind of rules. Just as a, just as a bit of a recap, the determinant of a matrix, if you're given the matrix in, with the vectors A, B, C, and D, the determinant of this matrix can be computed as follows. It can be computed as A, D minus B times C. So this gives the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. And as you mentioned last time, if the determinant of a matrix is 0, then the matrix is not invertible. In fact, I'm actually going to write that down to summarize our point from the last video. If the determinant of A is equal to 0, A inverse does not exist. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's talk about the case of a 3 by 3 matrix. And although the formula is going to seem a little bit complicated, you will see a more we'll see a more direct uh a direct and more algorithmic way of computing the determinant. But with that being said, let's go ahead and write this down. So suppose I give you the 3 by 3 matrix A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. If I go ahead and compute the determinant of this matrix, the determinant of A in this case, and we will explain this a little more a little bit more rigorously. Actually, let me just go ahead and actually use a different set of variables because we shouldn't be using the same kind of variables for everything. So let's see, A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A23, A31, A32, A33. Okay, if you go ahead and compute the determinant of this matrix, the determinant of A is going to be equal to A11, A22, A33. And don't worry where this for where this huge form is going to come from. I'll I'll do it in a more algorithmic way in just a moment. But anyways, uh, A33 plus A12, A23, A31 plus A13. A21, A32, minus A12, A21, A33, minus A11, A23, A32, minus A13, A22, A31. Okay, now you might be thinking, oh no, how am I going to memorize this massive formula? You could, but there's a much more nicer way to kind of memorize this, or at least derive this formula. And this is known as the rule of sorrows, but I'm not going to use the, the actual name for this. I'll talk about more of the algorithm. So how do we compute the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix? So the first thing I'm going to do is write the determinant, like so, so A11. A21. Actually, I'm just going to copy paste that matrix and then just redo the brackets at the end because that'll be a lot quicker. Okay, so let me just move this down a little bit. So let me just kind of maybe title this part as well. So, method to compute
3 by 3 determinants. Okay, let me go ahead and underline that thing. And let me just move this over here. Uh, actually, let's just move this over here. Okay, so now let's talk about how to compute the determinant of this thing. So let me just put this as vertical brackets. Okay, now what, thing, what we can do is put these two columns next to each other. So A11, A21, A31, A12, A22, and A32. The next thing we can do is kind of draw a few arrows as to, and I'll, and I'll indicate what the arrows mean in a second. So the first arrow is gonna be, oops, that's a double-ended arrow. Okay, so the first one is gonna be this one, this one, this one. Okay, the next set of arrows is gonna be this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is multiply the numbers indicated by arrows, and in the blue direction, we're gonna add the vectors, and in the green direction, we're gonna subtract the vectors. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm saying we're gonna do the following. So the determinant, so let me just go ahead and move this over a little bit, so we have a little room. Let's call this the determinant of A. Okay, so this is equal to, okay, so in the direction of blue, we multiply and add the vectors. So A11, A22, so let me just actually fix this up a little bit. A11, A22, A33, and then we do the same thing with the other blue arrows. So A, one, two, A, two, three, A, three, one. And then we subtract in the direction of the green arrows, but we still multiply the vectors. So minus A, one, two, A, two, one, A, three, three, minus A, one, one, A, two, three. Sorry, that should be multiplied. A, one, one, A, two, three, a32, and then minus A13, A22, A31. So this is a more algorithmic way of getting the determinant of a 3x3 matrix rather than memorizing that entire huge formula up there. But for a 2x2 matrix, it's fairly simple. So this isn't too bad for the most part. So let's do a few examples on computing the determinant of, well, a 2x2 matrix and a 3x3 matrix. And that'll be it for this video. So this is a fairly short video. Next video will be a lot more interesting because we're gonna talk about various properties of determinants. But with that being said, let's go ahead and compute a few determinants. So compute the determinant of A, the determinant of B, and the determinant of C, where A is equal to three, two, negative nine, and five. B is equal to three, negative two, negative 11, five, negative one, one, four, eight, seven, and finally, C is equal to two, two, negative three, negative six, negative eight, one, two, three, and one. Okay, so let's talk about how to compute the determinant of all of these. So the determinant of A is very simple. We just simply use the formula. So it's gonna be A times D, so it's gonna be three 
times 5 minus 2 times negative 9. If you go ahead and compute this, you'll get 33. So, fairly simple. Okay, for B and C though, this is going to be a little bit interesting. So let me just go ahead and copy the matrix of B. Okay, so for B, we'll have the following matrix. So the determinant of B is going to be equal to the following. So let me just go ahead and put vertical bars here. Okay. So remember, what we, what we do is we put the first two columns side by side, like so. And then we multiply across into the right and then subtract to the left. So what do I mean by that? Well, once again, let me just go ahead and get my arrows. Yep, there we go. So that's one of them. That's another one. And this is another one. So we're going to multiply and add the direction of blue, and then multiply and subtract in the direction of the green vectors. So we're going to be doing the following situation. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute this. So if you go ahead and compute this, the determinant is going to be equal to 3 times negative 1 times 7 plus 5 times 8 times minus 11. Let's see, then we're going to get plus 4 times negative 2 times 1 minus 5 times negative 2 times 7 minus 3 times 8 times 1 minus 4 times, let's see, 4 times negative 1 times minus 11. Okay, so if you go and do the arithmetic out, you'll get minus 467. So geometrically, this is saying that the area of the parallel of pi bit, because you're in three dimensions this time, is equal to minus 467, with the minus sign indicating that the direction of the orientation was flipped in some way. So geometrically, this is what this is implying. Okay, now let's talk about matrix C for a second. And this will actually be the last kind of example that we do. So this will be a fairly short video. Okay, so let me go ahead and copy paste that. So that's going to be C. So I want to compute the determinant of C. So that's going to be, once again, we put vertical bars here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put the first two columns side by side. So 2, 2, and negative 3. And then minus 6, minus 8, and 1. So if you go ahead and write the arrows, we'll get the following. So once again, we'll get this situation. So we multiply in the direction of blue and add them. And then we subtract in the direction of green. So let me just go ahead and do that. So one, two, and three. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute this. So if you go ahead and do the determinant of this thing, well, you're gonna get two times minus eight times one plus minus six times three times negative three plus 2 times 2 times 1, and then you're going to subtract in the direction of the green. So it's going to be minus 6 times 2 times 1, minus 2 times 3 times 1, minus 2 times negative 8 times minus 3. If you go ahead and compute this, you'll get 0. So what does this mean? Geometrically, this means that the vectors that make up this matrix so the matrix in general is not invertible because the determinant is zero meaning that the volume is zero meaning it doesn't make sense to take the inverse of zero per se so geometrically this is what this means
and that actually covers it for the examples. There really wasn't too much to talk about in this video. I just wanted to make an example of how to actually compute 2x2 and 3x3 determinants. We can do larger uh, size determinants. However, that's going to require a bit more uh, thought. And we often have to combine something called cofactor expansion along with some row reduction potentially. So that is it for this video. So if you, if you have any questions about any of the examples that we did, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. But otherwise, if this video helped you, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll really appreciate it. Thank you all so much and have a great day.